Good evening. I'm Glenda Carlin, and believe it or not, it's November 12th, 2024. Tuesday night, this is my weekly Zoom meeting where I incorporate A Course in Miracles and Dzogchen Buddhism together, along with some other relevant truths that match. Welcome, welcome. First thing I want to do, I've already invited, been sitting with Holy Spirit and all, but I invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, be here now. Help me, guide me what to do or say. Help those that are here with insights to help them on their path to remove all outer, inner, and secret obscurations so they can remember what they are, what their brothers are, and what source is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it came to me to go to my one of my rooms, I have the painting of Jesus behind me. It's from Glenda Green, but there's Jesus. And on the other side over here is Manjusri, but there's a Buddha statue. So I decided not just bring in these pictures. <laughs> a couple of them hadn't been behind me, so I brought them in. <laughs> because now it's called Deity Yoga, because when we don't feel strong enough, we lean back and visualize Buddha, Jesus, you know, or, or some deity. Manjushri is the deity of enlightenment or Mother Teresa or whomever. But you lean back, take on that image and then take on the virtues of that. And they help you. They help you and guide you. We don't ever try to duplicate somebody's look, how they dress or how they talk. But what we do want are these holy virtues that they practice that they exude, that they practiced when they were here, etc. Good evening, good evening. And, oh, and I, it came to me to remind everybody that, what, there's like 8 billion people out there, and my daily Zochian group out of L.A. that I meditate with, Timo Speckens, the originator of that group, reminds us of the whole universe of of there might be one or two percent of the people that practice what the A Course in Miracles and Dzogchen Buddhism is teaching, which is within us, the mind, is the natural state, the natural Christ awareness, the natural Buddha awareness, natural God mind. It's here now. It's just been veiled, clouded, covered up. By thoughts of separation, concepts, grievances we have against our brothers, etc. So it's just a matter of letting go of these obscurations to unveil this clear love light. It's a clear light because spirit doesn't have a color. It's clear light. It's spacious like the vast sky, like the vast sky. But uh, now the topic of tonight's conversation is what is divine unconditional love how to find it <laughs> how to relax and rest in it to float in the spaciousness of love's clear light presence why this topic came up was I in the last week or two was recognizing that when I was resting in this clear light, this spaciousness, I hadn't recognized that it's love's presence, that it's unconditional love's presence. And that just brought me to tears. Because how do you see love's presence? How Sometimes people talk about feeling it, that is a whole nother thing. It is felt like peace because it's not the feeling of love of the ego love. It's a warmth, but it's also a knowing. It's a knowing, a clear knowing. But um, you can see it. it. It's clear. It's spirit, like the clear light. And why is the clear light of spirit unconditional love's presence that question you want to sit with but when i sit with it and what i wrote in my email is 
why it's unconditional love is that light allows everything to come and go with it on it, doesn't exclude it, doesn't reject it, lets things come and go. Now, this is high Zochen teaching I learned from Lama Suri Das. I can't say I learned this. And, I, and only after I learned it from him that I went to the course where Jesus says, just let these thoughts uh, go like on a stream of water. That means they're moving. They're just going and coming. But I had never thought of that. I was trying to repress thoughts or deny them. But no, no, no. Ego's never going to stop talking. It, 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 we're not here to deny or repress thoughts, feelings, none of this. This all is coming and going on this clear light mind. Now think about that. This is a huge, huge understanding for you to take on and sit with. Because what does unconditional mean? No matter what we've done, there's, a God, there's only God's love. He's never stopped loving us or Jesus or all the enlightened beings. Once they wake up, they know love, but never stopped loving us. Never made any judgments. It's man that made the judgments. And somewhere in one of these, in my information, I sent out a second email today because I've been sitting with this teaching and came up with, I wanted to give you other information. But, um, gee, what was I? Yeah, letting things come and go. Was that the one Ooh, on letting kind of... go, um, Glenda? You sent one on letting go today um yes thanks Another email thanks is um i kind of lost my train of thought is unconditional love that means the son oh the son of god can do anything he wanted so what he did he made the Garden of Eden. He made some images to play with and animated them with the clear light. And with the breath of light, but animate the om, the om. It's a seven musical notes is in om. That was the sound that started all this, that animated all these forms. And the Son of God was playing with the forms, the trees, the two bodies, you know, meaning he put his awareness in the body and was experiencing what it was like to hear, see, touch from within a form. He was experiencing this form, but he knew what he was. He was a light, clear light. He was spirit, love's presence. But something happened. The single mad, mad idea was he fell in love with a form that he made and forgot that he was spirit. He's a body, a form, and therefore became prisoner into this shape. Now picture my skin has got an, a side to it. It's got borders here. This ah is really a meditation we're gonna do. What it does as we say ah and let go, that awe sound brings the clear light through the form and it goes out the cells of the edges of the skin. And all around us is the clear light of God. It's never changed the mind of God. But we feel separate. This light that's inside of us feels stopped at this border. But tonight I've got you a technique where you can go through the cells and in that connect and dissolve into this clear life that's here now, main, main, meaning no inner, no outer is joined. And that's the glimpses that we want to, experiences we want to experience as we go on the path. And it, I remember what I was going to say. In one of these emails, Jesus says, the Son of God made this. The Son of God made it. 
And I had I didn't quite remember reading that because I've been people have been at ask me or say, well, I thought God created all of this. Oh no. The Son of God made up this Garden of Eden, not God, the Son of God. And when he forgot what he, he was spirit, he fell asleep and is seems to be asleep and forgot what he was. But he made these forms. Now let's see. I, um, oh gosh, I've got about 16 pieces of paper. But um, in both either one of these two emails, I'll run on to it. Jesus makes the connotation, the son of God did it. He made, he made his belief in the body. So it's, and that's the opposite of religion. And that's why people leave religion because they go, well, how could God do something like this to everybody? Make dualism, make tunis, make hell and nirvana or heaven, right? Samsara or nirvana, heaven or hell. Well, he didn't. It's only in the mind, the asleep mind of duality. And we learned a few weeks ago in the clarification terms, Jesus says, the mind is the activating agent of spirit. And the when the activating agent of spirit supplying its creative energy, that's this prana energy, this God mind, it's been using and make up these things, but it can wake up and use its God mind, Buddha mind, Christ mind, to send out this loving kindness, empathy, compassion, and healings, beam out clear light from the third eye and from the heart chakra, beam out light to touch the hearts and minds of all beings. But anyway, I digress. Yes, I want to, I want to, and again, I got that lucid dreaming thing here at eight o'clock. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go through here uh, kind of quick. Let's see, let's get this stuff back in sequence here. Is, is, um, I want to go back on this clear light that you see here. It's animating this form. It's going through every cell of everybody's body. It doesn't stop at my skin. It's only my mind, my thoughts have it stop at my skin. It's streaming through everything continuously. That's why we're, it's called interbeingness, interconnectedness. We're not separate. We're in that light. But, um, oh, so I want to get to... How do you then, but that inner light, that arc of light, that great rays clogged up due to thoughts, perceptions, grievances, feelings, judgments. So we want to let go of these. And we do that with practice with a, of our truths, advanced forgiveness that Jesus does, where we look, teaches that we look past the body to the clear light of spirit that's here on each form. And we silently say, God, and I love you to every form. Because lesson 183 says, call yourself by your name, God. Because there's only God. But again, at first you got to believe you're a, a pure consciousness of Christ or Buddha. <laughs> you could kind of evolve. There's only God. Light here. But so I, now you can see this entire meditation. I learned of this from Lama Suridas. Last Sunday, he, every Sunday, he has a Sunday town hall meditation group, free. You go to Zochen, D-Z-O-G-C-H-E-N dot org, and you can sign up to get an email with the link for that Zoom Sunday town hall meditation from 11 to 12 Eastern time. He has various teachers, but last Sunday, we all were honored he did it. He did the meditation. This man went to India in the 20s. And this is, he's a 50, 40, 50 year practitioner. He's got this inside and out. But if you listen to what he teaches, that tells you what he's narrowed all this down to. It'll save you years of work. <laughs> he's narrowed this down. Now, granted, he's coming from Dzogchen, which is the highest teaching within, it's not even within Buddhism, it's the highest teaching over Buddhism. 
but he incorporates, he was, last Sunday used to talk about Jesus, because he's talking about the Jesus that's like Buddha. They knew their nature was this pure, clear light of love, love, pure, that's it. But anyway, so here's what he did. And, and I've been in Zoom meetings before where he's talked about ah, A-H, but A-H is a seed syllable that dissolves karmic, karmic and energetic obstructions. Now that's a big damn deal. It dissolves them, buddies. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to dissolve this layers of all these judgments and grievances we've had in their unconscious. It's knee jerk. It's knee jerk. But anyway, so what he did is, oh, first I want to describe this. The awe, ah, and I, t I've, I have taught this because I learned this from him. When you're nervous, you feel upset. Three times in a row, you take a deep breath in from two inches below your navel. I used to breathe shallow. Two, and I still do. If you get a little nervous, you'll notice you're kind of shallow and contracted. That's when you take that breath. Two inches below from the navel, deep in breath, and on the out, long exhalation, like the long exhale, you go, ah. Then you take another deep in breath, ah. Do it three times straight in a row and you will change your disposition because it's calling on all these endorphins, the heart, the divine love you are. And then you can go to Om Ah Hung, Om, O-M-A-H and H-U-N-G. Say that real fast. That lines up your crown chakra, your throat chakra, and your heart chakra and gets energy for you. And it's like a circle. It's a circle. That's the diamond circle. The diamond, I mean, diamond rule. It's all connected. But I'm just talking about these three chakras right now. But the awe, uh, but what what he did, he 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 had us take the I did it I was on I was just on my phone I wasn't in the actual zoom meeting but I could see what was going on take the take this breath in and you and what you're going to do you're going to waller that sound around from high frequencies low frequencies short ahs to long ahs just waller it and and nobody can hear you it's none, this is not time to be embarrassed by anything because what this does, this is dissolving karmic and energetic observations. It's a, it's a, it cleanses and purifies body, mind, and speech. Now, people in some course students, they'll get all caught up in this world. I don't even want to talk about the body. I don't want to talk about speech. I'm just clear light spirit. I go blah, blah, blah. No, we're in dualism. We believe in two-ness, dualism. We can't deny this because that's repressing all these thoughts and feelings we've repressed our whole lifetime and other lifetimes. Guess where they go? Unconscious mind. And they perk up. Ego brings all that crap up. And we knee-jerk act, you know, not responding. So we granted in the absolute, there's not mind, there's not body, there's not speech, but we're dealing with dualism here. And that's why it's called, and why Jesus could walk around and Buddha, they embody the virtues of God. Hey, so we're embodying, you embody it, body, mind, and speech. You're hearing, you hear with love, you bring your attention to your heart and you hear from love, you hear from your heart. You see from love because you brought your attention to your heart. You have to bring your attention to your heart. That's combining heart, mind. I never, never knew what the hell that meant. Because then you live from heart, mind. Put your hand on your chest. The heart, the physical heart actually is the home of divine, unconditional love. It's the home of it. I never knew that till maybe a few months ago. You know, we all hold, pick up this stuff, but I was slow on some of this. So anyway, we're embodying these five, five senses, but the sixth sense is thinking. And before we know it, if we haven't combined the heart, then we hear something, we go off in labeling, judging, gluing words, 
and thoughts together to make sentences of judgment, paragraphs of judgment, and stories of judgment. Well, the, in Zochian, we learn to let be aware of when we're starting gluing this stuff together and we let go. <laughs> let it go. Don't, don't beat yourself up about it. The huge thing is you became aware you were doing this. Let it go. So on this awe, he did this for 10 or more minutes. I've never seen him do this. I'm not kidding you. And why he did it, I this is my assumption. It's after the election. People, some people were feeling either elated or upset. But if they're feeling upset, how are they going to let go of all this stuff? All these obscurations, all these judgments, all this stuff. He even called it, you can see a ship show if you want to see it. I mean, this man does not, enlightened holy being, does not deny what seems to be showing up out here where others see this great deal. It's each perspective to each his own. But it, yeah, you know, so how do you relieve that sadness? That sadness, even if it's not politics, you have a death in the family or you have an illness or something's going on. How do you re let go of this? How do you let go? Ah, okay. So here, so what? 10 minutes, I'm not kidding. But I want to picture what happens when you take that deep breath in. I want you all to sit with this because it's a big deal. Look what happens to your body. It feels a little tense and contracted. Because you're taking in that breath, tense and contracted. Now, why I'm bringing this up is that Lama Sri Das, he's taught this before. What's the quickest things that can bring enlightenment? And it's, I'm not kidding you, sneezing, sneezing, climax, dying. Because what those mean, there's a gap. There's a gap between this duality. Sneezing, you just picture when you sneeze next time, you can feel all contracted. And I looked it up. If it's a sudden involuntary release of built up tension. Now, we all got a bunch of built up tension. Egos hanging around. <laughs> Besides all this other stuff going on. <laughs> Even your own personal life, your own physical body, etc. But anyway, sneezing, climax, dying are the times to attain enlightenment. Because in that pause, person can wake the hell up because they that there's a gap there of that natural enlightened state but that's what the awe does the awe it came to me when I was sitting here thinking about how to explain this because I'm really wanting to share this and it can be an enlightening experience for you you get these glimpses of this enlightenment so you take that deep breath in there's a tenseness but then the Ah, uh -huh. the ah uh, is the letting go. Oh, so he'll ask, what do all three of those things have in common? And he, and then he waits a little bit and he goes, oh, it's letting go. Sneezing, climax, dying, letting go. So ah, uh, deep breath in, your Titan kind of condensed. Ah, uh, you flop, lower your shoulders. Ah, uh, a h ah. Uh, it's like a relaxed, a release. It's huge. I'm telling you, this thing is so huge. I'm embarrassed that I haven't explained this in greater detail. So, as you, so I'll just kind of uh, show you. As you take that breath in, and I'm talking, then let me get a drink of water. And you go like, ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 uh. you are wallering that voice. You are going for it. When he teaches this in private, when you pay for these Zoom retreats, 
He'll say, oh, take take that deep breath. Take that drink. Then now we're going to well, do this all. And he'll do all that with his mouth. That, oh. Oh. Oh, and then he'll say, oh, let's do it a second time. Then you do that again. He says, oh, we're going to do it a third time. And then you do all that. Then he goes, I lied. We're going to, this time I really want you to do it. We're going to do a fourth time. Okay, now in a picture, he did this for 10 minutes. Now, he didn't really waller his voice that like extravagant like I did, because he didn't need to do that. But he would just go, ah. Oh, Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. In minutes. Boy, you get relaxed. You let go. You let go. And what I found when I was Checking the, I got so many notes here. Uh, what this does, let's see, page three, here's page four. This is in chapter 18, VI 10. Now let's see if I can get this all going here because I want to read a couple things that are so wonderful. Oh, uh, this can slip you past centuries of effort. Now, what I'm talking about here, this is in Jesus chapter 18, section 7. Here's what Jesus says. What we're doing here is things, we're actually doing a little bit with the body, but it's the mind. It's the mind. He says, to do anything involves the body. And if you recognize you need do nothing, you have withdrawn the body's value from your mind. Here's the effort and escape from time. This is the way in which sin loses all attraction right now. For here is time denied and past and future gone. Who needs do nothing has no need for time. To do nothing is to rest and make a place within you where the activity of the body ceases to demand attention. Into this place the Holy Spirit comes and there abides. He will remain when you forget and the body's activities return to occupy your conscious mind. Yet there will always be this place of rest to which you can return and you will be more aware of this quiet center of the storm than all its raging activity. This quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. For from this center will you be directed how to use the body sinlessly. It is this center from which the body is absent, and that will keep it so in your awareness. Now, what we're talking about here, and when you do all that awes, and then you just relax, guess what? You have just joined the inner light, merged it with this outer light, and you're resting in divine, your divine nature. It's rest. That's true rest, true interbeing. I mean, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Peace, whatever you want to call it, which is beyond the sun and the stars, beyond all the bodies. What we're talking about here is this holy, clear light that's divine, unconditional love. Whoa. Now, let's see, I want to... Minds are joined, not the bodies. That's the other big deal. See, we're using our mind to remember what we are. We're using our mind to practice this because in this dualistic world, we have dropped, lodged, put in the body. Every All the cells have been clogged up. The heart, all these chakras have been clogged up with these obscurations, grievances against our brothers, family, whatever. And this is clean. We're cleaning and a clearing here. <laughs> oh, and Jesus says, you can stretch out your hand and reach heaven. 
Now, listen, that's what I'm trying to explain. Heaven's right here now. This clear light, you can reach out. Here's heaven. Who in the heck would ever think that? That That's because it's the clear light of God mind. Spacious God mind is here. And these images, our bodies, are floating around in that clear light. We look like we're walking on the ground and working, walking on earth. Oh, but I, but here's the thing that happens. You practice that 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 awe for 10 minutes and you lean back into that spaciousness. Guess what? Some of you will feel like you're floating. Now, why is that? Why is that? <laughs> here's why. The great ray, you know, that comes in the top of the head and comes in, that connects each to eternity, that's like a tether, like that's tethered you to source, you know, the light, the light's coming in through that to animate the form, or we'd be a flat 2, 2D figure laying on the floor, right? <laughs> Animated, we're... but picture you're like an astronaut in a spaceship and they told you, oh, you're gonna, you've trained and you're gonna go out and you're gonna repair something. And they put a tether on you. They put an oxygen tube on you, right? As you leave the spacecraft. And then sometimes they let you go out there and just float around. Well, here's the deal. This vast God mind, this is like a balloon, a children's toy has been animated. That sucker floats. The tether is the great ray. In Hinduism, called the cord of light. We're tethered to source. So we're just, all the beings have it. We're just floating around. But see, you don't feel that till you become lighter. Because judgments, grievances, uh, all these odd feelings, repressed thoughts and feelings have clogged everything up, made everything heavy. And so you don't feel light. That's when you know you're making progress. If you feel a little lighter, <laughs> then especially if you feel like you're floating. But anyway, I want to make sure I get that in. Oh, oh, and this is, here's the paragraph. And what I'm talking about here is being transported beyond himself. This is three. This is the, in that chapter 18, VI1. This is Jesus talking. This feeling of liberation. That's what I'm talking about here, liberation exceeds the dream of freedom sometimes hoped for in special relationships. See, that's our loved ones, our partners, husbands, wives, partners, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, partners that love special relationship, which gets converted to a holy relationship just by how you think of the person. You just keep saying silently to them, I love you, I love you, your spirit, your God, you're this clear light. You're... Because that's what spiritual sight means or spiritual thinking is we're thinking like Holy Spirit thinks. He looks out and sees himself, which is clear light. God, this God love. So we have to think that way. Our loved ones, God, 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 I love you, I love you, I love you. Your spirit, light. Anyway, takes them from special relationship to holy relationship. Uh, it's an escape from limitations. If you will consider what this transportation really entails, you'll realize that it's a sudden unawareness of the body. That's what we're talking about here. And a joining of yourself and something else which your mind enlarges to encompass. Well, what's the something else? God, mind, God, clear light. <laughs> and your mind enlarges. It expands, extends. The course calls it extends. But that light from within it's held up is radiating out your cells and you feel that joining it's called space mingling as well where you connect and dissolve into this clear light but anyway because neither are considered separate what really happens is if you've given up the illusion of a limited awareness and lost your fear of union now see that's what you keep talking Jesus talks about we're, re we're learning to reason with ourselves. You're talking to yourself. Now, this is true. This is the Dharma. This is the truth. There's not two-ness. There's only this clear light animating everything. And so, but you're expanding your awareness to think it's called 360 degrees. You get out of thinking you're just in this skull and into thinking front and back, 
up and down, sideways, 360 degrees. You're expanding your vision, your awareness, going to capital A awareness. You got to expand it out of this body, this limitation. That's And that's what he's talking about. An illusion of limited awareness and lost your fear of union. The love that instantly replaces it extends to what has freed you and unites with it. And while this lasts, you are not uncertain of your identity and would not limit it. You have escaped from fear to peace, asking no questions of reality, but merely accepting it. You have accepted this, this union, instead of the body, and have let yourself be one with something beyond it, simply by not letting your mind be limited by it, by this body. Ah, don't you love that? <laughs> this is such a huge thing, this awe. Let me go back here to what else I was thinking. Make sure I cover, because see, these are things I sit with and that I experience Oh, I want to think, talk about this, this unconditional love, which is this clear light that's spacious and everywhere. In sky gazing, that's part of Dzogchen, that meditation, they have you look at the sky. So then during the day, go, go look at the sky and picture clouds. The clouds come and go. Birds come and go. Airplanes come and go on this vast sky. Well, God mind, your mind, your God mind, that, that's, the, that's your natural state. That God mind is vast like that sky. And it's letting, at uncondi with unconditional love, it's letting everything come and go. That is so huge. I can't even tell you how huge it is because I didn't get it for the longest time when that Lama Surya Das would teach this teaching of letting, letting go means letting things come and go and just be. And just be means to rest, to lean back and rest in that clear light. But isn't that just so beautiful? That spacious sky, that spacious God mind doesn't go grab onto the clouds. <laughs> doesn't go grab onto the birds. Doesn't the sky doesn't go grab onto the birds or the airplane, right? Think of your mind like the sky. Don't go grab onto this stuff. Now, how do you know you're grabbing? It's when you feel irritated, upset, nervous, depressed, confused, ignorant. All those men suffer, miserable. Then you simply stop and have a journal where you write, what was I thinking about? Because the thoughts are going to be there before the feeling. And if we don't catch the thought, then guess what? There's a feeling, then there's another thought, then there's a feeling, then there's another thought. We just start super gluing thoughts and feelings together to make sentences, stories, and paragraphs. Just simply let go. I This is so huge. I'm so embarrassed that I never thought to explain it like that. Just F and let go. <laughs> it's that simple. Now, some of us may have some hard trauma from childhood or something. I'm not saying you don't get psychotherapy or have friends, friends or families talk to. I'm not talking about putting the body in harm's way. I practice the middle way. For example, I go to the doctor. I do my six-month visit, my visit, annual visit. And today I went to the dermatologist. And he found two spots that were precancerous. But I'm looking for spots, folks, because I'm in the sun, Florida, the sunshine state. We're not ignoring the body because I want to keep the body going so I can continue to wake up fully in the, our chants and prayers that we do with Zochin. It talks about till we reach full enlightenment or until we reach supreme enlightenment. And I used to wonder, what the heck does that mean? Well, honey, because there's the dual mind thinks in layers and levels, and we can't just go zap. Most people just can't go zap from darkness to light. We do it gradually. But you can save yourself years of work with some of these let go practices. Is It's just so beautiful. But I mean, you get help. 
I'm practical. You get help. Proper diet and exercise. I go to the health club. Exercise because exercise relieves stress. And then when I'm at the health club, I'm thinking silently, God, 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 God. I'm not kidding you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, that's the practice. Sometimes people ask, what's the practice? Whatever shows up in front of your face is to practice Jesus's advanced forgiveness. And in Zochian, that's called trechin, T-R-E-C-H-O-D, if I still am saying this right, means seeing through, being through, cutting through. Jesus's thing is to look beyond the body to the clear light that's here. Being through means like I'm looking through Joan's form and they're just clear light. I ask you if you could just uh, take that box because you're not going to feel like it tomorrow. <laughs> the box off that uh, we're moving. I'll do the box for you well we're the the body is a box it is a prison hole prison box prison thing that we have made up believed it was believed it was Angie you gotta mute honey <laughs> go ahead and talk but um but don't you just love this awe I mean really Oh, man. Let's see. Attachment and aversion. See, we're aware. We've learned these words. That's what's so great about uh, me practicing Zochin. I could go back to the course and see what Jesus is trying to do. But look at this. He's saying slip past centuries of effort. Now, if there wasn't reincarnation, why is Jesus talking about in the course? This will save you thousands of years. This will save you centuries of effort. <laughs> because we believe we're a body. So when we die in that bardo, we can't let go to the light. But here's why we do meditation. So that you can sit on that meditation cushion and be aware when the mind wanders off to these thoughts and feelings and you let go and bring your attention back to this vertical axis point, this great ray core of light, to this spaciousness of light that's here, right in the center behind your forehead, although it's everywhere. And then the mind will wander real fast again, 100, 200 times in a meditation. No worries. The purpose is building on spiritual muscle. You're deconditioning the egoic mind to recondition it to your true identity. And the, the truth of how things operate. You're learning how the mind operates, egoic mind operates. And you're not falling prey to it anymore. You're getting liberated. But on that meditation cushion, without meditating, a daily practice meditation, a, a, a path of meditation, not just mouthing these things and maybe once a week or reading once in a while. The, the real deal is to meditate daily. Best if you can do it with a group because there's a synergy and energy with this group of people. Uh, and then integrating these truths in your practice, where thinking of your family members, yourself, who uh, TV politicians, people on TV, the actors at the health club, grocery store, gas line, who are, what is the real identity of these people? That's what, you're training your mind. Uh, but any, uh, to, oh, so then that clear light spaciousness, you're becoming familiar with it now. So when you die, the physical body dies, guess what? When the body dies, those Tibetans are really intelligent. They've got the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. They, thousands of years, people have documented these things. They know what's going on. The physical body, when it dies, then there's nothing confining the mental mind, body, it's called mental body, it just then starts going even more wild. Can you imagine that? It's wild enough now the way it is, right? But if you've practiced on trying to see this clear light, then, and you say in your will, you want people reading these sentences to you while you're there on your deathbed, if you it's not a quick death, go to the light, go to the light. This is so... It's such a clear, their sentences, they read to them. But that Lama Suri Das, one time, there was a big karma group he had. And I think it was in that. But anyway, some holy enlightened being had died laying on his deathbed. 
and another holy enlightened being is sitting by his bed. And then these other beings are watching this and that holy being that's sitting by the other the other man, holy being, is, I'm not kidding you, Mama Sir says, he was yelling at him, go to the light, go to the light, go to the light. And they thought, boy, he's really goosing it, you know, because, mm, because let me tell you, this is a desk, it's all those thoughts are going. So there is a big deal what you all are doing has ramifications you have no idea but i'm trying to give you the big picture and motivate you to keep practicing like for example joan she goes to that daily zochian meditation L la and she tells me she never she never didn't think you know like i don't know if there's anything's going to happen or not i forget what she said but she she can tell the difference with daily meditation Joan, I don't want to put you on the spot. You want to say something or not? You got to unmute, honey. I don't know how to unmute on this thing, but this is huge. Uh, oh, you're unmuted. Yeah, I'm unmuted, right? So I was just going to say, I told Glenda, you know, I put it off and put it off and put it off. And honestly, when I've tried to meditate on my own, I've really had a rough time. So anyway, going to this group every day from 11 to 12, like Glenda said about with a group, you feel like you're, you're lifted up by the group experience. And it's just, it's unlike anything you know, because you do what you need to do to take part. And it, this is going to sound crazy when I say this, but I tell this to people about golf. I say, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I almost feel that that's the way it is with meditation because I took to it like a duck to water. And it just has made a huge difference in my life. And I just wish everybody could try it because it, it can really make a huge difference in your outlook and how you are. Now explain, you used the word awareness, which you had never really used before that I could pick up on. You become aware of, tell me about it, like thoughts or you kind of are aware. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the best thing is how you teach us, you know, to let thoughts come and go. Because let's face it, the way things are, it's like we have monkey minds and we just are constantly thinking constant thoughts that are distracting us from the way things really are. And um, so, you know, if you're able to let thoughts come and go, and just relax, it just helps you to get into that kind of sacred space where you feel like you're you're really getting in touch with yourself and God. Well, well and then when you're off the cushion, are you more aware of, of not oh, letting thought, thoughts run the show? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. It really, it, it just changes you. Because you become oh. aware of all this crazy stuff you're thinking about and the negativity and the labeling and the judging and the this and the that, you know, you see yourself doing these things and, you know, mm -hmm. you, know that you don't want to be doing that. Because mm -hmm. and oh. said, we're all, we're all God. Wow. See, and that's the called the practice. It's a path. She's practicing. She's on the path. Oh, Joan, that was so beautiful. Thank you so much, Joan. Because now what, what happens with meditation is ego does not want you to meditate. And A Course in Miracles, I'm embarrassed to say, I never really realized the whole workbook is about meditation. <laughs> and in what in this in my first 
And my first, uh, in that first email though, it talks about how to let, you let go of all the bearers you hold against your brother. And then it, it'll talk about, it talks about where Jesus is talking about, close your eyes and just let this thought or something. And basically it's letting these thoughts go. But I'm embarrassed to say, I didn't recognize that's what he was talking about, meditation. So I didn't meditate prior to finding Dzogchen. But so then when you start to meditate, it will be difficult in the beginning because we're not used to looking at the mind. So then you think, Oh, it's worse than, it, well, I, how come it's worse than it, I thought it was? Well, it's not worse. You're just aware now of what your mind was doing before you weren't even aware of what it was doing. And that's why you practice and you decondition. It took me a year, year and a half or more to real peace would come where, but you y'all get the form. So don't let ego make you stop like, oh, I don't want more thought. Well, you're just aware of how the mind was, but it will over time. This does all calm down because then you get, you have that breath. You're taking that breath. Like we'll stop and say, take a breath. And you take, you take that breath. And I go, ah, oh, during this meditation, as often as I want to, I relax and you go, then therefore you go deeper, 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 into that still point between the vertical great ray axis and the horizontal physical plane axis is the still turning axle of the center of the cosmic wheel. The still vertical center, the still eye of the storm is right here in the middle and you're bringing your attention back to that still center and you just rest there, be there and then the mind wanders. And then you just become aware of space. Then you don't have to always just bring it back centered. It's a spacious mind. But the great thing when you get off the cushion, or I mean, when you're on the cushion, people can talk yak, 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 all while you're meditating. But you've learned to let your spacious mind, let that be. And whenever you want to listen to something they're saying, you go listen. So that's why off the cushion, you become the embodiment of Jesus or Buddha, where you're living in the world, but you're not of it. And that thing about heaven and earth joined, Nirvana and Samsara are one, because they're joined, form and emptiness are not separate, because the light is animating out of every form, or it wouldn't be here. We have projected, God, the Son of God has projected these images. In the pre-separation state, there was no, in the Garden of Eden, it's in the course, there was no lack. The Son of God remembered he was spirit and was just playing with these forms. But then he seen, he fell in love with the forms anyway. So uh, I kind of got, it's time to close this down a little bit. But now Zochen, some people ask me, they don't know what it means. It means great perfection or great completion. Now, great perfection means natural body, natu the heart-mind joint called natural heart-mind, nat natural breath and energy. The breath is the breath of life, but energy is the prana, the light, the clear light from the great ray. <laughs> it becomes natural. All this is in harmony. It's all flowing. It's all the great Tao. It's all flowing. And you know, and then you respond accordingly. It's not the cards you're dealt, but it's how you play the hand. Just because we practice and do all this doesn't mean everything's going to be hunky-dory. That's not the deal. No, we, that's not it. No matter what shows up, it's how we play the hand, but we breathe through it. We breathe through it, remember what we are, and practice these truths as we live this physical in this physical realm. But with the big understanding, we're here to help our brothers wake up from the dream of separation, where it's not just me, 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 me. 
No, it's we're in this together. So in our Zochin group, we dedicate the merit. We dedicate any benefit of peace or calmness or whatever we receive during that meditation to all sentient beings in all the realms. That means animals. There's six realms. Humans are, we just think so closed. There's gods, demigods, humans, animals, hungry ghosts, denizens in hell. The, the God, the son of God's mind has split this stuff all the hell apart into layers and parts. But anyway, but the power of the God mind can help free all this by how we think with empathy, compassion, and, and love. This divine, unconditional love that's here, you go rest in it, and it just so, I cry when I sit there and go, how did I miss this? That love, love's presence is right here, right now. That this clear light is God's love's presence. Just rest, lay back in it like a feather pillow. It never left us. We just took our mind off to believe something else. You're bringing your mind back to this awareness. And you, uh, we, we're removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. It's always been here. This clear light is soaked with unconditional love. And just think about the sky. The sky doesn't go grab onto the clouds or the plains or the birds. So our God mind, leave this stuff be. Now, if you got to make a decision, you'll you'll make a decision. And then you recognize when we are layering, putting some judgments on, then we let go. And remember what these people are. I still, I'll catch myself doing crap. Then I'll put my hand on my heart. Forgive me, please forgive me. I didn't mean that. No, no, no. You know, we're letting go. Because in a, in a minute, there's 60 seconds. And in a second, there's nanoseconds. So I forget how many mind moments are in a minute. Can you imagine an hour? And all this ego is making knee-jerk judgments nonstop, unconsciously. It all is just unconscious. And but sometimes we're aware of some of these things. And it's these are not our thoughts. You are this clear light awareness, this awareness, God of, of love. Not these thoughts. You're becoming aware, big A aware of the of the thoughts. Anyway, any thoughts or comments? Oh, before we go, think, go around the screen and think of each person. This is advanced forgiveness. You can just think of them. We call it out loud. Holy God, Terry. Holy God, Glinda. Holy God, Barbie. Holy God, Lorraine. Holy God, Joan. Holy God, Angela. Holy God, Julia. Holy God to all those that watch this video later. And I want to thank you all again and again and again for coming out because see, there's a synergy with you all being here. This helps Holy Spirit speak through me and things come through me that I might not have done that helps then that flow when the video is seen on YouTube. It just, and people talk about that. They sense this love that we have for each other and for all beings that we send out for everyone. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any thoughts or comments before I stop the recording? Oh, I love you guys so much. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Let's see if I...